Hello, folks. Hope you guys are all doing well. This is our very last review video for the final exam. And today we are going to be discussing Unit 5, which was on similarity. Okay. So, uh, if we were to, if I were to describe what does it mean if two shapes are similar or two objects are similar, well, I like to describe it as same shape, but different size. Now, this is not exactly a mathematical definition, but it's kind of a nice way of remembering what things should look like, okay? Um, mathematically, what does it mean if two shapes are similar? For two shapes to be similar, okay, they have to meet two conditions. One, all corresponding angles must be equal. Okay, and two, all corresponding sides. Well, they're not gonna be equal because we just said that they're a different size, right? So if they're different sizes, the sides are not gonna be the same, but they are proportional to one another. And we'll look at what that looks like right now, okay? So let's say, for example, to illustrate what this might look like, we have three rectangles. Okay, so let's say that this rectangle uh, these look terrible, but there we go. This is four and this is six. Okay, and then we have another rectangle where this is six and this is nine. Okay, and then we have another rectangle where this is Two, and this is four. Okay, well, if we were to compare, let's say we compare these two first. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare lengths and widths. So this is the width. And this is the length. And I'll use lowercase letters and uppercase letters for each one so that we can distinguish between the two. Okay, so if I make a ratio of uh, width to width, that's gonna equal four over six. Okay, and that reduces to two thirds. Or if you put that into a calculator, actually, if you go four divided by six in your calculator, whoops, you could do it that way too. Convert it to a decimal, you get 0 0.666 repeating. Okay, so you could do it that way too. Okay, if we compare lengths, we get six over nine, which is also two thirds when we reduce it, because these can both be divided by three. But if you also go six divided by nine on your calculator, you get the exact same decimal. Okay, so that's one way of telling that these two uh, corresponding sides are proportional. Now, how do we know that the angles are equal? Well, I told you that these are rectangles. So if I tell you these are rectangles, all of the angles are right. Okay, so these are similar. Similar. Okay, 
Now, if I compare these two, let's say, and hmm, maybe what I'll do is I'll, how should I distinguish these ones? I will use, uh, hmm, I gotta use like a different kind of letter. I'm trying to think of another way I can draw a W. Maybe I'll do like really squiggly. There we go, I don't know. <laughs> and just a little L like that, so that it looks different from the first one. Okay, and if I do the same thing, here I'm gonna go width to width, so there is my little squiggly W over uppercase W. I'm gonna get two over six, that reduces to one third. If I put two over six in my calculator, I'm gonna get 0 0.333333, okay? And if I do length to length, I'm gonna get four over nine, which is, oh, whoops, I gotta clear that. Four divided by nine, 0 0.44444. These are not the same. Therefore, these are not similar, okay? Because the ratio of the corresponding side lengths are not equal. So not similar. And if these two are not similar, right, then these two are also not similar. because the middle one was similar to the one on the left. Okay, so if the, the two to the left, the middle one, right, if, well maybe I'll label them A, B, C. If A and B are similar, but B is not similar to C, then C is also not similar to A. Okay, so this is how we can kind of tell using corresponding sides, you know, how we can justify, I suppose, by looking at the side lengths that these guys are similar. Now another thing that we can do is if we're told that uh, some shapes are similar, then we can use that fact to figure out side lengths and or angles, okay? So let's say for example, the following triangles are similar. Determine the unknown sides, angles, labeled. Okay, and let's say I have this one and this one. And I'm going to say that this is uh, 25 and this is 15. And I'll say that this one over here is, let's go with, uh, hmm, 18. Okay. And I'm going to say that this is X and that this is uh, 47 degrees and I'll call this Y. Okay. Well, I know that corresponding angles are equal. Actually, I should label the triangles as well. Sorry, let me do that first. I'm gonna call this triangle A, B, 
B, C, and this is D, E, F. Okay, now one thing that in terms of notation that's important to know is that when you are saying that two triangles are similar, okay, you have to make sure that the corresponding angles go in the same order when you're naming the triangles. So if I say triangle ABC is similar, now the symbol that we use for similarity is one squiggly line like this to triangle. Now the angle that's in the same position as A, which is this one over here, that's the one that has to go first because that's the one that went first in my first triangle. So D, and then the next one, angle B goes with angle E. So E, and then the last one, C goes with F. F. Okay, so corresponding angles are equal. So the angle that's in the same position as the 47 degrees is angle Y. So we can say Y equals 47 degrees. That one's fairly straightforward, okay? Um, the part that's a little trickier is figuring out angle X, but we know that corresponding sides are proportional to one another, okay? So we can use proportional reasoning. And the idea here is that we need to pick a pair of corresponding sides where we know both and use that as one side of our proportional reasoning equation. And remember, with these proportional reasoning equations, we always have like a fraction equal to a fraction, okay? So the sides where we know both are the 15 and the 25, okay? What we're trying to find is x, and x goes with 18. So if x goes with 18, that's gonna be one fraction in the proportional reasoning equation, and the 15 and the 25 is gonna be the other. Now, I like to solve proportional reasoning equations where the unknown is in the numerator. So I'm gonna set it up where I have x over 18 as one side equals, now to get the other side, I need to make sure that the side that's in the same triangle, or the same shape rather, in general, as x, is in the numerator because I chose to make x in the numerator and that's the 15 and the side that's in the same uh, shape as 18 goes in the denominator and that's the 25 okay now to find x I just need to solve this equation okay so how do I undo division by 18 I multiply both sides by 18 and then I just cancel Okay, so x is going to equal 15 divided by 25 times 18. This is where we get out our calculators. 15, whoops, 15 divided by 25 times 18, and we get 10.8. Okay, so x equals 10.8. Okay, so if we are told that two shapes or two figures or two polygons are similar, we can use that fact to determine angles in the shape or side lengths in the shape, which is pretty handy. Okay, um, while we're on the subject of triangles, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about triangles in that triangles are one special shape. Where the criteria for determining similarity is actually different than in general. And we actually have to know less information than usual to show that two triangles are similar, okay? So you need less to show similarity for triangles than 
for other shapes. Okay, so here's what you need to show. You need to show one, that all angles are equal, or two, corresponding sides are proportional. Okay, for everything else, you need both. You need all angles equal and corresponding sides proportional. But just for triangles, it's either or, which is kind of nice, okay? The other thing that's handy to know with triangles is remember that the angle sum of a triangle is 180, okay? And why is that handy? Well, if you know two angles in a triangle, you can figure out the third. So if, for example, I have that this is 28 degrees and this is 95 degrees, okay, and this is X, well, X is going to be 180 minus the other two, okay, because then you know all three angles in a triangle. So basically, if you wanted to use number one, essentially, you only need to know two out of the three angles because then you have enough information to find the third, right? So 180 minus 95 minus 28. Oh, whoops, I have to clear first. 180 minus 95 minus 28, 57 degrees. Okay, so X equals 57 degrees. Okay, so that's something about uh, similar triangles. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about with similarity is scale factor. Okay, so a scale factor is a number that we can use to either scale up a shape, which means we make it bigger, or scale down a shape to make it smaller. And essentially the scale factor is the number that we would multiply all of the side lengths by to produce the other shape. So if the scale factor is bigger than one, we're gonna scale up the shape. If the scale factor is smaller than one, we're gonna scale down the shape, okay? So it's a number that we multiply all sides in a shape by to scale it up or down, okay? So for example, if we have a shape like this, uh, I don't know, let's pick a simple one. Um, Let's say this is three and five, and we apply a scale factor of two, then we're gonna multiply both sides by two. We're gonna get six and 10. Okay, if we take the same shape and apply a scale factor of half or 0 0.5 as a decimal, then we'd multiply all of the sides by a half. So three times a half is 1.5. And five times a half is 2.5. Okay, so you this would be scaled up and this would be scaled down, okay? Now the scale factor is always equal to the new over the original, right? So if you are comparing like, let's say we're comparing the width to the width, this guy's the original and this one's the new. 
Okay, so if we're trying to figure the scale factor for this one over here, the big one, here, the scale factor is equal to 6 over 3, which is what we used, right? We used 6 over 3 is equal to 2. We used a scale factor of 2. For this one, this is the new, the small one's the new one. The three, the one with the width of 3 and the length of 5 is the original. So here the scale factor is uh, 1.5 over 3, which is... 1.5 over 3 is a half or 0 0.5, okay? So if you have um, a scaled version and an original, you can figure out the scale factor as well by taking two corresponding sides and taking the new and dividing by the original, okay? Um, sometimes the scale factor is given as an, as an original, as a ratio rather, where you might see something like model to original equals 1 to 50. Okay, so that means that if the model equals, uh, let's say, 30 centimeters, right? And you want to know what's the original. Well, what I would do is I would use this ratio this way. Model to original. And then write this right underneath. 1 to 50. And then right underneath, write 30 to what? Okay, and then actually that can turn into your proportional reasoning equation. So you could do this, right? 1 over 30 equals 50 over x. And if you wanted to at this stage, you could write the reciprocal of both. 30 over 1 equals x over 50. Okay, and then you just multiply both sides by 50 to solve for x. Okay, and 30 times 50 is, I think, 3 times 5 is 15. And then you add two zeros for the 50 and the 30. There you go. Okay, so that's a little summary on similarity. That's our last review video. Well done, you guys. I will see you all soon.